I have noticed a couple of things. Um, we're going to have to ramp back up and hopefully I won't burn up the charger while, while we're doing this, but those are the NE magnets. Pretty powerful puppies. They can stick to that. And that's a nail head. That's where I usually keep them. I've noticed something. If I put this magnet up here to this line, I won't feel anything. If I take it next to the DC line, I get a buzzing. And depending on how close I get it to that DC line, I have been able to I switch polarities on the magnet. Push the line before. There you can see it's starting to wiggle. You can see that I'm affecting the DC line. Kind of like one of those permanent magnet motors. And that's all I'm doing. I'm trying to do the same thing here. Nothing. Now when I hold it close to an energy source with the DC line, the magnet buzzes in my hand. It feels about the same oscillation as the Hertz hum put out by the, by the battery charger here. I've noticed that I'll get that same feeling if I go here to the electrodes on the outside. Not so much down here on the bowls, but right here on this electrode, I can feel it. Right here on this electrode, I can really feel it. Seems like I can feel it a lot farther back on the negative side. I switch polarities on the magnet. Same deal. Here on the positive. And I'm looking for it to influence the gas. It doesn't seem to do that very much. But. Uh, as you can see, we're still topped out on our amperage, so I'm going to kill this before it kills the battery charger. And I'm wondering, why do I get that? No, I'm not putting any charge through this. At all. And there's no movement. I have to touch it to move it. Here's that uh, the coil cell, which is the first cell that I noticed the, the whole magnet thing going on with, because I had seen uh, down here on this first oxygen ring, it would uh, start generating gas here, and the wave would travel this way. I've got some video of it on this same disc, so I'm kind of working on using up this disc so we can see it and I can post it and other people can say well that's just because of the uh, magnetic interference or the resistance of the uh, ribbon of stainless even though it's really cheap stainless and let's see do I have that aglet around here somewhere oh uh, yeah right there as you can see it's not the world's best grade of stainless but um, it's kind of strange. Kind of wondering about that. Now with the stainless steel bolts, wait, 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 get to see more magnets from other experiments. Um, my stainless bolts seem to have a little bit. Um, this Oneida 1880 stainless. It 
does seem to have a little bit of reactivity here on, the, on that hoop. Let's try here on the handle. It's all in here on the hoop. That's enough. There's some reactivity, but it's nothing like that. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, that's. How strong these puppies are, but I'm wondering why I get that uh, going on when I do the DC current and uh, the uh, the magnet thing. Again, let's try influencing the black line. Seems like. I'm not getting nearly as much. I'm, I'm buzzing. I get that buzzing feeling. One thing that really turned me on, this is how I found out about the buzzing. I got close to... Uh, I don't feel the buzzing there. That was kind of strange, though. I pulled it up. Oh, it looks like the generation changed a little bit. But when I first noticed the, the buzzing was hovering over this, I was the first place I felt it. I can feel it there much more powerfully, or here much more powerfully. Try reversing it. Same buzz. Same buzz. Let's see if we can influence this now. Well, I can feel the buzzing, but it's not influencing it unless I touch it. So, the magnetism has to do with amperage, because I'm not pushing nearly the amount of amps that I was with the other one. I almost want to hook it back up and try it. In fact, I 